Are you looking to add a little more bang to your Arcade 1-Up Terminator 2 arcade cabinet? Are you tired of playing the same game over and over again because only one game was included on this? Looking to add a whole bunch of games as well as some better light guns? Well, today we're going to be talking about the Retro Shooter Integration Kit. That's right, you do need to own a Retro Shooter Kit, as well as purchase this integration kit from the Buy Stuff Arcade Store. They have several options available where you can get a whole new control panel, you can get a control panel with joysticks and buttons to take advantage of the 5,000 games included on the Retro Shooter console, or you could just use the stock control panel, which is the most cost-effective mod, and what I'm going to walk you through here today. Let's take a look at what's included with the Arcade 1UP Terminator 2 stock modification kit that Buy Stuff Arcades was kind enough to send me for the purpose of review, as well as filming this installation tutorial. You're going to have various wires, and what's really fantastic about this is everything is labeled. And it's not only labeled, it's also color-coded labels, so you know what plugs into what. Green plugs into green, red plugs into red, blue plugs into blue. It couldn't be any more simpler. And of course, we're going to use their light gun sensors versus the stock sensors that come with the unit. You're going to have all these wires, and it's going to look like a daunting mod. And this mod will take you about two hours to complete. And keep in mind that this is going to be a full gut mod of your Terminator 2. You're going to lose access to your Arcade 1UP user interface, Arcade 1UP PCB, Ar Arcade 1UP leaderboards, etc. We're going to be doing a full gut mod of this cabinet. Here's our new LCD converter board. You guys are familiar with this. This is so we can add the HDMI signal to the arcade machine to plug in the HDMI console. And then, of course, we have a whole new encoder board and all these wires that we need to plug into the control panel. Overall, this is an expensive project. It's at least $150 for the kit, depending on what add-on and options you want included. Plus, you need to own one of these Retro Shooter gaming console kits that are sold separately at RetroShooter.com, link below. You're looking at a couple of hundred bucks for this light gun kit with the console is and the pedals, and then, of course, a couple hundred bucks on what you get from Buy Stuff Arcades. Plus, you need to own an Arcade 1UP T2. The price does add up. Okay, let's get to work. Step number one, unplug these cables, remove your control panel from the arcade, plus unplug everything from the PCB that's on the back of the Arcade 1UP monitor. There's six screws here. Go ahead, use a Phillips screwdriver and unscrew it. That way you can gently flip this thing over, take your screwdriver right here, and also remove that grounding cable. These are the two cables we need to unplug to free up the PCB, and those cables are going to be reused. Make sure you're very careful with these cables that you don't damage them in any way because we need them in order to make this whole thing work. Grab the new LCD HDMI driver board here and screw this into existing holes on the back of the monitor right there at the top left and right corner. Easy peasy, you're going to reuse the same screws that were holding in your Arcade 1UP PCB. Now we need to go ahead and connect these cables. You're going to have this uh, power cable here with red, yellow, and black wires that's going to plug into that port there on the top right. And then this cable right here, this LVDS cable, make sure your board is mounted exactly like mine. Take this cable, make sure that the red wires that are on the left side of the cable, you can see them there right above my thumb, that those are pointed to the left and plug it into the port right up here. Make sure you have it lined up correctly with all the pins, that there you didn't miss any pins, that all the pins are in there and give it a nice firm push. And now we're just going to screw in the grounding wire into one of the existing holes, again, reusing the same screw. The grounding wire here is got a nice length to it, so you could pretty much fit this in any one of the open holes on the back of the monitor. I'm just going to put it right here and screw it in. When you're done, it should look something like this. We're now ready to go ahead and do our mods to our control panel. That brings us to step number three, removing the encoder board from the Arcade 1UP stock control panel. Take your Phillips head screwdriver, remove the six screws, remove the plastic, cut this zip tie right here, and that way you can unplug the color-coded button wires from the color-coded ports. Once those are all unplugged, as you can see there on the top left, on the bottom right and left, you can remove the two screws. Don't lose them, we're going to reuse them. So grab your new Buy Stuff encoder board, this white board right here, and reuse those same two screws you took out. Put them back in, screw this thing in, and this board will be installed. And remember what I said about color coding? As you can see here, we have color coded ports where these colored wires are going to get plugged in next. Okay, let's wire everything up. Grab the three prong cables that are coming out of the volume and power switch and go ahead and plug those into the ports labeled volume and power on the encoder board. 
then the buttons are pretty easy because you're just going to go blue to blue. That's for your A button, which is right there, that live button. That's going to become an A button. I'm going to put these stickers here for up, down, as well as for the A button. And that way, when we go back here to do our colors, we're doing green to green. We're going to do uh, orange to down, and we're going to do yellow to up. So this way, we have up, down, as well as an A select button being used on our encoder board. Now plug the player 2 start button, which is a gray cable, into the black port on the encoder board. Also plug in the 3.5 millimeter audio cable that came with the headphone jack cable that came with the buy stuff kit into the white port on the board. Plug in the white micro USB-C to the USB cable into the USB-C USB -C port on the encoder board. Then grab this three-way power cable that came with your kit and plug that into that port right there. Okay, that brings us to step number six. We're gonna mount our new infrared gun sensors onto the arcade cabinet. I did try where you could run the cables behind the bezel and have the cables sitting on the bezel. But honestly, guys, it looked really tacky. I didn't like the way it looks. So I'm gonna have to strongly recommend you grab a drill bit. You're gonna wanna start with a 1 8 drill bit and work your way up to a 5 16th. It might take you three, four, five drill bits to get to the size hole you want. Go slow, let the drill do the work, that way you don't crack the bezel on the plastic. When you're done, you're going to have a hole just like this, and make sure you drill in the exact same holes that I did, right at the corner, the corners there where the blue and red kind of stick out at the top corner of the bezel. And yes, you are going to have to remove your bezel and clean all the crap that spills out underneath it, because a lot of stuff is going to fall behind the monitor bezel as well as in front of it during drilling. But this way, when you get your bezel screwed back on, you could grab the new infrared sensors that come in a separate bag from your buy stuff kit, as well as the cable for them is in that same separate bag and go ahead and run your cables through. I would recommend just uh, holding on to one cable while you pull the other one through. That way it doesn't accidentally fall. That way, once you have it here, you're going to then plug these cables into the infrared sensors. They're just little white ports on the back of the sensors. There's also some red uh, double-sided adhesive state tape that we're going to peel after we get them both plugged in. And that way, when we mount these on the monitor, they're not going to fall. They're just going to sit on there permanently. What's really cool is these sensors work perfectly fine with this retro shooter kit compared to the gigantic obnoxious sensors that come with that light gun kit provided by Retro Shooter. This, in my opinion, is a pretty good and nice clean install, and it definitely doesn't look obnoxious in any way. Okay, let's go ahead and mount our control panel on our Arcade 1UP Terminator 2 cabinet. Be very careful, you got a lot of long dangling cables. Go ahead and put it in. You could even put the screen protector on and screw it in place if so desired. You can remove the side screws from the arcade cabinet as well as the riser to mount the holster as well as the uh, little shelving unit to hold your pedal if so desired right here on the side of the cabinet as well as you'd want to run your gun wires. There's a couple ways to do it, so it's going to be up to user preference. You could try running all the wires under the cabinet. Uh, me personally, I did not like going this way, having the wires coming out of the front uh, by the kick plate. So my recommendation is if you've done the T2 mod where you've cut the bottoms of the holes of the existing holders in the stock control panel, you could just drop the wires through there for your guns, just like you did with the original guns that came with the T2 cabinet. I honestly didn't like running the cables this way through the underneath the cabinet like this. So my suggestion here is if you've cut out the bottom of the holsters to run your original Arcade 1UP T2 light gun cables through there, do the same thing here. Yeah, it sucks having wires hanging out like that, but it works. Okay, let's go ahead and connect up our retro shooter console, this Pandora's box that came with the light gun kit. You have a port labeled USB. You're gonna wanna plug in the white cable right there that's hanging off your control panel. Now you're gonna to wanna to connect your player one light gun to USB one, and then player two light gun to the port labeled USB two. Keep in mind on this shot here, I had the cables running underneath the cabinet, which I ended up not liking. So the cables now in the final build are dropped through the top of the cabinet through the control panel. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug in the um, pedals for player one and player two into the player one and two pedal ports. Now, when it comes to these cables right here, these are for the recoil. We are not going to plug those into the console like you normally would if you only own the console. We're gonna end up plugging them into a separate cable provided by Buy Stuff. 
But before we do that, let's go ahead and connect the HDMI cable that came with our retro shooter console. We're gonna connect it to the HDMI port on the console and then plug the other end of the cable into the HDMI port on the monitor on that HDMI board. And now we're gonna grab the recoil cable that came with the kit from Buy Stuff Arcades. You'll recognize it. It's got a toggle switch on it, a cable marked A, and another cable marked Power In. We're gonna go ahead and plug this part right here into the top. This toggle switch is great because when we connect it to the recoil cables at the bottom, we could just toggle on or off the recoil effect on the light gun. So you should see this other cable in your kit from Buy Stuff. It's got two pink ends that say recoil on it, and then it has a plug labeled A. Well, green to green, remember color coding, nice and simple. And the purple pink side that says recoil, well, you're gonna drop that down and you're gonna grab your recoil cables that are sticking inside the cabinet and you're gonna plug it into both of those recoil ports. But that way you'll be able to toggle on and off with a simple toggle switch on the cabinet whether or not you wanna play with recoil on or off. Okay, step number nine, connect the rest. Remember that control panel, you have an audio cable that you plugged in to the buy stuff encoder board while on the other end of that audio cable is a label called hdmi board we're going to plug that into the three and a half millimeter audio port on the lcd driver board right here also you'll have another cable dangling inside your cabinet from your control panel labeled marquee and what do you think we're going to plug in there that's right the marquee cable for your light up marquee that way your marquee will turn on and off with the cabinet but what about the speaker cable that's dangling down from your stock T2 speakers. Well, you're going to want to plug that into the little cable that's got a green end on it that's labeled speakers. Couldn't be more simple, guys. I love the fact that Buy Stuff has everything color coded and labeled for you, so it's going to be really hard to make a mistake here. But this way, the marquee as well as the stock speakers work with this modification. Okay, you're going to have one last cable that came with your kit from Buy Stuff Arcades that you haven't used yet. And what do you know? It's labeled appropriately. This is a three-way Y-splitter. This is going to help us provide power to all the devices that we're trying to run and install in this arcade cabinet. So first thing we're going to do is take the side that's got a pink label on it that says Retro Shooter, and we're going to plug that into the power port that's on the Retro Shooter console. And we're going to go ahead and move our cables and bring them up here to the top. We're going to take the side that's got an orange tab that says HDMI board. That's the power plug for the HDMI board. And we're going to plug it into the power port. As you can see here, side by side with the HDMI audio cable, you really can't make a mistake on where this goes. We're then going to grab the yellow uh, cable that's labeled IR sensors. And that IR cable that we installed so long ago with our light gun sensors, that gets plugged in right there. Now the third end of this three-way Y-splitter has a blue cable on it or a blue sticker on it that says three-way. You're gonna connect it to the loose cable hanging in your arcade cabinet that's got a blue label on it. So blue to blue. You can almost barely catch it on camera here. My apologies, I missed it, but it's the blue to blue cable and all those connections should be complete. Now at this point, Everything should be plugged in, except for these two cables right here. These two cables are what's going to power everything. You're gonna need two power supplies to make this happen. The original power supply that came with your Arcade 1UP Terminator 2, as well as the power supply that came with your Retro Shooter console. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the Arcade 1UP power supply into the cable that's coming off of the inside of the arcade cabinet. And then I'm gonna take my Retro Shooter console power cable and I'm gonna plug it into the other power red sticker cable. And this is for that toggle switch for the recoil. So to make sure the system doesn't get overloaded, the retro shooter power supply powers the recoil effect and the arcade one-up power supply powers everything else. Monitors, speakers, sounds, light guns, pedals. At this point, you could go ahead and power it up and everything should turn on your marquee as well as the console and your monitor, and your speakers. Remember, there's no sound in the main menu, so don't panic. There's only sound when you're actually in a game. And you can either use the controls on the gun to navigate, or you can use your up, down, and A button and start buttons on your control panel, because keep in mind, those are now plugged into the encoder board, so you can navigate that way as well. Don't forget, you can hold down the player one start button on either the gun or on the control panel itself, 
to enter the calibration mode, as well as to turn crosshairs on or off. Overall, this was a super awesome mod. It's going to take you some time to complete, and it is costly considering you have to buy a retro shooter kit plus this integration kit, plus have an arcade one up T2 to put it in, but this definitely has breathed new life into this arcade cabinet, at least for me. And luckily, after my wife got to play Duck Hunt and Police Trainer, she was all for what we did, and she's happy with this mod as well. Exiting games, you just hold down the player one start button on either the gun or on the control panel and then navigate down to exit game once that uh, feature pops up. Takes about five seconds. Yeah. Sure.